We covered pricing, contracts, invoicing, where to find these brands, all the good stuff. Now, let's get into how you actually film, edit, and deliver these UGC videos to those paying brands. Now's the moment to bring what you chose from the second video of the series. That's right, whether you're going to focus on physical products or digital products. There's a lot of information on which one to pick, which one to focus on. It doesn't necessarily have to be one or the other, but this does involve where you live, what brands you reach out to, and who you actually want to work with. So once you have that down, then you can move on to the actual filming. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you need these two things before actually hitting that record button on your phone. Number one, knowing the style of video you're going to create. We already talked about that in the previous videos in the series, so if you haven't had the chance to take a look at the whole UGC series, go back to those videos where I talk all about that stuff. So the style of video really depends on what the brand is looking for, whether they're looking for something directly to put through ads, like a direct seller, or maybe something more casual, like just a video that's going to be on their TikTok, on their Instagram reels. Obviously that goes hand in hand with the second thing that you need before filming, which is the script. No matter what the brand tells you, make sure to always send the script for pre-approval before you sit down to record. The worst thing that can happen is you spend your time recording, you make this really great juicy video, and then the brand says, oh wait, that's not what I wanted the video to say. That's why it's super important that you do have this script done, whether you write it, whether the brand writes it, whatever you guys decide in that negotiating process, make sure that it is done, written, sent for approval, you got it back with a yes before sitting down to film. And with that, we're officially ready to record. You guys know that when it comes to equipment, the only thing that I have used and that I recommend you guys use is your phone. If anything, later on, as you start working with more and more brands, obviously you wanna increase the quality, then you can go with a light and a mic. If you guys have already gotten the toolkit down below, which is completely free, you know that I recommend going with the mic before the light because the light can be easily fixed by this that I'm about to show you. Right now I am using an external light, but if I go really quickly to the window, you can see how it looks just as good. Using natural light, even though it's literally raining right now, will always be your best solution for making sure that the videos have a good, good, good lighting. Keep in mind that I always recommend that you do have high quality videos. I already shared the video on how to change your phone settings so that your camera is tippity top giving you the best camera quality. But other than that, when it comes to actually deciding on the location that you're going to film, if you don't have that natural light, get outside and make sure, test your angle before you actually start filming to make sure that everything is well lit up. Light is just that extra oomph that really makes the video stand out. Now, I do have to add that most of the time, this just isn't as obvious as when we're actively thinking about it, so I really, really want you to focus on this that I'm about to tell you. If you are working with, let's say, a workout company, don't film it in your kitchen. It just doesn't make sense. Just like if I'm filming a beach chair, I wouldn't film it in my bedroom. That just isn't correlated to the message this brand wants to be sharing, even if they don't say that there's a problem with it. It just doesn't look good for a consumer scrolling down. I've said this throughout the series, and for those of you that have literally watched every episode and subscribed, you guys know what I'm about to say. This is literally you being a business. So what you are providing, the video you are delivering to the brand has to be business quality. And at the end of the day, the way for you to get more and more clients is to make that brand happy. If that brand's happy, they'll come back for more and more. Make them even happier and they'll refer you to all their other friends that have brands so that they all come work with you. 
That's the way to grow and scale your UGC business. So literally make the best videos and make these brands happy. And before we jump into the structure and the editing and the delivering of the video, keep in mind that it's also about the little tiny details. Let's say if I'm working with Nike shoes, I just wanna make sure that my leggings, my shirt is an Adidas because it just doesn't make sense. Put yourself in the shoes of that brand. Right before filming your video, check your entire angle to make sure that everything looks good. All right, water break and on to the process when filming. This video is about to get super, super juicy. So bring your notepad and get ready to write all this stuff down. To start off, even though you've already gone back and forth with your script, I want you to keep in mind that your script, obviously you wanna make it as juicy as possible. And always, always, I recommend always starting off with a hook. A hook is that thing that is basically going to stop the scroll, especially for these short videos where brands are using it on TikTok, on Reels, maybe on ads. You do wanna make sure that it's interrupting the scroll pattern. My favorite way of doing this is obviously using a really, really good hook in what I'm saying, so in the actual script, and adding in some movement. Whether it's me literally throwing the product in the air or moving into the camera scene, you just want to add movement so that person does stop to watch the rest of the video. Now I have gotten some comments and some questions, which I love when you guys comment down below in the videos because it literally helps me to know what to add into the next following videos. You guys are saying, yeah, but it's not needed to show your face. And yes, I agree, it's not 100% needed to show your face. If you're not 100% comfortable on the camera, you can still do UGC videos. Just keep in mind, and the reason why I mentioned this in the first video of this whole series is because you can only offer like one style of video if you're not showing your face, which is basically unboxing videos. And while unboxing videos are great for brands, brands need a lot more than an unboxing video. So it's a lot easier if you can provide everything that that brand is looking for. And that's when we jump into an important part to add in the first three seconds of a video, always show a face. It's already been proven that when someone is watching something, as soon as they see a face, they connect more. They're more likely to watch through the end of the video and they're more likely to connect with the product, which is obviously the end goal for these brands. Imagine I'm talking about this mouse. I'm like, this mouse is amazing, it's great, blah, blah, but you're not even seeing the mouse in action. You're just seeing the mouse like on a plain background. That's not as appealing as me showing the mouse, like talking about it, holding it, showing how I click through everything. It's just not as juicy. So obviously add in your face. You want these videos to perform very well. The better they perform, the more likely the brand is going to reach out again. And of course, show the product. Imagine this mouse is amazing. This mouse clicks through every single page. It's ergonomic, but where's the mouse, right? You obviously want to be able to show the product. If it's digital, you can have a green screen. There's so many different ways of doing it, but you do want to make sure that you are visually showing what the brand is offering. From there, I always love jumping into the main selling point of that product. What makes this mouse different from all the other mouses in the world, right? That's exactly what you want to add. And if you are writing this script, no matter if the brand is writing it or if I'm writing it, I always make sure that I'm playing around with this platform. It's a secret platform called Copy AI to make sure that I am giving the brand the best script possible for these videos. I can play around with the different features that they have and I can really create a juicy video no matter what style they tell me. If it's a video where we're hardcore selling the product, like an ad, then I'll use this feature right here to write out the script. If it's something more casual, then I'll use something like this feature right here and that way we can have a really nice script and this platform is absolutely hands down amazing. I love it for any type of videos that I'm creating. So you go through the main selling points. Obviously some brands will send you what they want you to say. You're going to add all that into the video. One thing that I do want you guys to keep in mind, if you are filming selfie mode 
and the product has text or something. Obviously this doesn't show anything, so it doesn't matter. But if I'm showing something like this, and the text is completely backwards, well, that's obviously not as appealing for somebody scrolling. Of course, you get it, it says October, but it's very different if I flip the camera around and I'm showing you the product where you can actually read the product name, what it has to say, maybe you're showing the ingredients or other information on that product. What I just did right there in the video was mix in a footage of me talking to the camera with the footage of a clip and a voice over, which is another style that's great to combine in your videos. All of this, I'm gonna explain exactly how you do in post editing with an application that I love, it's free to use, and you can do it straight from your cell phone. We're about to jump into the editing, but of course, we cannot finish a video without ending it strong. If it is a hardcore selling video, something for an ad, obviously you would add in a call to action that's like shop here, click the button below to buy, go to www.blah, blah, blah, to shop whatever the brand is telling you to do. But if it is a more casual video, my favorite way of ending the video strong is to always like leave the audience wanting more. So I leave the video, like I drop off saying something like very incentivizing of the product. So for example, for the mouse, if it's just a casual video, I would drop off saying, and now with the mouse, you can say goodbye to that terrible hand pain from being on the computer all day long. Boom, video ends, and that way the audience is like, hmm, yeah, like my hand does hurt with that terrible mouse that I have. I'm not saying that this is the best because it's not, but that's an example of what I would do if this mouse was really like a good one. I do have to search for a better mouse though. And with that, we move into editing. My go-to platform is this right here. InShot, it's completely free and you can use it straight from your phone. Now through InShot, you will be able to add your clips through your video if you are filming different clips from one video. Drag it, drop it, cut it, erase it. Like it's super easy to edit straight from your phone. Of course, there are a ton of other options, but that just like the easiest thing to use for me. Now through InShot, you can go ahead and add text with that button right there. Keep in mind to only add text if it is something that you did negotiate with the brand, whether that's something that you already have included in your price or you added it as an upsell, like an add-on. Only do it if that is something that you made it clear that the brand was getting. For those of you that have been staying up to date on IG stories, you guys know that the camera literally got overheated with how much information, so we had to take a little pause, but IG is the best place to stay up to date, and we also do Q and A's on all this good UGC stuff. So let's jump right in. We were talking about editing. If you are adding in the text, you can do it through InShot. Only do it if that's also what the brand is expecting, and as an add-on is what I truly recommend. Other add-ons that you can have are things like animation, pop-ups, sound effects, music. However, keep in mind, if you are offering animations, text, pop-ups, make sure it is something that you know how to do. Of course, you can outsource it through Fiverr. I have a curated list of editors that I love that I'm gonna put in the toolkit, but make sure that it is something that no matter what happens, you can deliver and you can give the brand what they are expecting. That's like a rule of thumb that has to be said. Now onto music. I never like offering music or adding on music to these videos just because you do have a huge thing of copyright that you do have to be careful with, especially if they're using it on socials, if they're running ads with it, you never want the brand to not be able to use that video. And most of the time, these brands will use it on IG Reels, on TikTok, on YouTube Shorts, things like that, where you can add in music directly from the platform. You can use a trending song, something that's really popping in that moment of posting, and that by itself is just going to give that video even more reach. So there's really no reason why you should be adding on music unless it's like something very, very, very specific that the brand wants and that you also have either through art list or something like that. On to the biggest, biggest, biggest mistakes you can be making. You went through all that effort, literally all of that that we just went through. You literally did everything you could to make this video the highest quality video ever. You watched that video where I'm telling you how to program your phone to get the highest quality settings. Now you're done. You deliver it to the brand 
and you just send it maybe through email directly, maybe through Instagram directly, do not ever do that. And boom, what happens? Well, the quality lowers and lowers and lowers every time you send it through a platform that's not optimized for video sharing. So listen up. To ensure that the brand is getting the highest quality video, literally straight from how it looks on your phone directly to them so that they are downloading it in the highest quality possible, you wanna use something like Google Drive. I personally love and use P Cloud. P Cloud because it does have a lot more storage and I have tons and tons of footage, even all my YouTube videos that I upload there to make sure that everything is stored. So I obviously need something with a lot more space. But if you are starting off, Google Drive is the perfect thing to use. What you'll do is upload your video. Once it's ready, you will get that link. You're going to grab that link and send it to the brand with a little thank you message whether you are communicating with them through email you'll send it through email if you are and if all the conversation has been done through instagram then i would do it through there the link not the video directly but other than that keep it professional by doing it through your email there are only a handful of times where i would recommend stepping up to a platform like frame io and that's when you're working with multiple brands like on bigger projects and frame io is that platform that you can collaborate with the brand and if there are any comments or adjustments that need to be made on the video, the brand can comment right on it so you know exactly at what timestamp they want that change made. Speaking about changes, we did cover this in a previous video on the UGC series where we talked about contracts and all that good stuff. Always, always have it written what's included and what type of changes the brand is getting. Whether that involves one editing revision, one filming, revision that means that you're filming again make sure that it's written and that the brand knows exactly what they're getting because maybe the brand says oh but we don't really like maybe the location that you filmed it or that's not something that we were looking for you have to go out and film it again well obviously that has to be factored into your price so make sure that you do have it written in your contract and approved by them exactly what they're getting so they know the amount of changes that are allowed. All right, and this video could not end without sharing some insider tips. There's one or more tips that you're going to absolutely love. Now, this is normally, this happens before filming when you're like, I need some inspiration. Like, what do I do when this brand says, okay, like I'm ready to film? Oh gosh, now I actually have to think of a concept of what I'm going to film. What style should I do? I obviously want the video to perform because if it performs, the brand is more likely to reach out, come back, therefore I grow my business, all that good stuff. So what do you do? My favorite thing to do is number one, you go on the brand's actual current page. Go on their TikTok, go on their website, go on their Instagram, see what has already been working. If you see that something is really working, it grab traction, has a lot of interaction, well, obviously that's something that the audience is already looking for. Therefore, that's a great indication that's something you should do. You don't necessarily wanna copy and paste something they've already done unless they tell you to because most of the time these brands are looking to work with creators for that creator input that they can add on. They want something different. They want something very innovative. So you do wanna make sure that you take what's working and you make it your own style. Besides looking at the brand's page, I want you to look at industry pages. So let's say we're working with some Nike shoes. We want to make sure that we look at what's happening in the footwear industry, what's working, what's not working. We also want to take a look at competitors. So we'll look at Adidas page. We'll look at what's working in their footwear, what's not working, what's having a lot of interaction. Again, not copying and pasting, but using it and making it your own Style. Now, for the ultimate hack, a trick I love doing, and you can use this with any industry, any brand, no matter where you live, anywhere, is going to the Facebook ad library. The Facebook ad library is basically a place where you can see all the ads that brands are running. Ads obviously are what people are paying to be promoted. So videos, posts, all that good stuff. That's all public information. To go on the Facebook ad library, you'll type in the brand's name. You can see all the posts that Nike is running through ads. Obviously, if a brand is paying for an ad for a little over a month, 
it's working. Why? Well, because you have paid ad managers that are literally studying the conversion, studying what's working, they're turning off what's not working, they're leaving on what is working. So if you see an ad that's working, that's been running for a long period of time, you know that consumers are loving that style of video, they're loving what that brand is showing, the style, the direction of the video, so that's a really good indicator on a style you can use. Now, let's say you're not working with a big brand like Nike. It doesn't matter, you're working with a local footwear shop. That doesn't matter. Look at bigger players in the industry because most likely, they'll be running ads and you can always use that for inspiration. All right, this is literally a jam-packed video. So much information. We covered a lot. Don't forget to check below. I am adding in all the recommendations that we're putting that toolkit so you can have all of this in one place. Keep in mind that this has been a UGC series, so there are videos where we've been covering step by step from how to get started, how to reach out to the brands now, to the editing, the filming, the delivering, all that good stuff. So if you haven't already watched those in the past, leave me your comments down below to know what I should be adding onto the next videos. As always, I'll see you right back here on this same exact channel next time. Bye-bye.